Welcome back to another episode of the Ark Survival Guide. Today we are going to pack up our base in the highlands and get all of our dinosaurs that we're going to bring with us moved back down to the raft because we are going to head back to Viking Bay to do a lot of other cool stuff that's going to get us in great shape to uh, expand our adventure all over the map on Ragnarok. So we are getting really close to finishing up those last few things on our list to uh, get ourselves really well established before we just start going out on adventures and taking over all kinds of stuff. And also, hopefully, this will be a little bit better audio and video quality. I am still playing around with some new systems on my new computer, so hopefully you'll notice a decent difference on that. So uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. So keep watching, and uh, I'll also explain a few things on uh, that we didn't cover on how to breed dinosaurs, too. So the first thing I want to do here is uh, we brought one of our dung beetles up from the raft because we have four dung beetles and there's just really not enough poop to go around for all of them. And if you look here on the left, we've got some of our new baby dinosaurs that we just finished breeding. We've got our cute little baby Dodicarus down there. She looks like a tiny little ping pong ball, even more so than usual when they're babies. So uh, I'm carrying this dung beetle over here. I just placed a little foundation with uh, thatched door frames all the way around, which seems to be about the most effective way to keep a dung beetle secure. So in order to produce fertilizer, a dung beetle has to be on wander, and uh, they will just wander all over the place and get out of everything. So they're kind of a pain. So I'm trying to get this guy positioned in here, and they're also really difficult to actually place where you want them. So if you're carrying a dung beetle, you can kind of walk through a doorway, but uh, he'll actually get stuck in the doorway normally. So they can't really wander out of a place like this, but uh, they're easy to get in and out of. So now he's in here finally, and I'm going to set his behavior to enable wandering. And as long as he has got wandering enabled, he is going to produce a constant supply of oil and fertilizer, which will be really helpful for all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to drop some uh, dinosaur droppings in there. And uh, another thing, if you remember when we were doing our guide on dung beetles, is it will actually produce a lot faster if you put different sizes in there. So say he's got one medium, one small, and one large, he's actually going to produce three things of fertilizer in uh, 15 minutes instead of producing, if they're all mediums, he'll produce one medium every 15 minutes. So that's, that's one little tip there. I'm going to go ahead and put some doors on before I leave just because these things really are escape artists and it's kind of hard to keep them in place. So hopefully this will uh, do the trick. And I really don't want this guy wandering around, falling in the water or anything like that. So we do have an indoor swimming pool. Got to keep your dung beetles out of the pool. That's just disgusting. So he should be in pretty good shape, and uh, now I'm going to head back up to my Pyrocer tank because I want to get a whole bunch of berries to uh, take care of my dinosaurs for a long time while I'm gone. I've already loaded a lot of meat into the uh, feeding trough, but I need to stack hundreds of berries because I've got a lot of herbivores that are going to be eating a lot of them in there. So, um, and I'm also still staying close to my base because that uh, Dodicarus is still a baby. She's not quite old enough to feed herself yet. So I'm still having to keep an eye on her, a very close eye on her health and food. And the fastest way I can gather berries is with this Parasair. He gathers all the bushes around him and gets hundreds of berries really fast. Like that actually was probably enough to cover my dinosaurs while I'll be gone. So we'll drop those in the food trough and uh, just cut to the next section because you don't need to see me moving stuff around inventory all over the place. So I've been just kind of doing stuff around the, uh, around the cave for the rest of the day. It is now dark out and I'm laying some thatch foundations. The reason I'm using thatch is because we are completely safe inside this cave and uh, even if anything can get in here we have a big plant species X turret blocking the entrance. And that dung beetle is going to constantly produce more fertilizer which uses ammunition for it. 
So we're pretty much going to be really safe inside the space. And I want to get this outpost set up with all the amenities that we need so that if we teleport out here, we're actually going to be in pretty good shape with all the stuff that we need out here in the highlands. So I just dropped a smithy and now I'm placing a forge so that we can smelt any metal that we pick up. There's actually a lot of metal nodes scattered throughout the highlands, so if we end up needing some later on while we're out here, we can just pick some up. And uh, these torches that I was using for uh, keeping the eggs warm are still out here, they're still helpful for being able to see everything, but it looks like the sun is coming up. And uh, this little baby Dodicarus is doing great. She's pretty close to, uh, she actually is a juvenile now. And as soon as they're juveniles, they're actually able to eat out of the feeding trough, which means I can leave her alone and she will be perfectly fine. So she's finally going to be self-sufficient. So that's going to help a lot. I'm dropping a mortar and pestle here, and I left a cooking fire over next to the eggs. Um, so those torches and the cooking fire are both going to produce heat in case we need to hatch any other eggs, because I have a male and female pteranodon that I'm leaving here, and I'm going to keep trying to breed them in order to get more babies. So uh, it is a beautiful day. Check out that sunrise. I mean, this is just an awesome place to live. Another really nice thing about the highlands is uh, right down at the end of this waterfall, there are always potatoes just ready to be picked up. So uh, I seriously thought about starting my file here because there's a lot of really cool amenities. It's a very different starting experience if you start in the highlands. But uh, if you look around, there are no trees in sight. So when you're trying to level up using thatch and wood, which is like everything, uh, there's just nothing around. So it's just really hard to level up out here, which is why I just decided to do uh, Viking Bay finally. So we've been moving stuff around. It's really not very interesting. I've just been carrying supplies back and forth between my raft and this base so that we can have most of the stuff we need. So now I'm just loading up the dinosaurs onto my Parasurf fort and uh, getting everything that we need to take back to the raft because I want to carry some of my dinosaurs with me, have them always nearby. So I am locking up a lot of this stuff and uh, getting everything ready. So I moved some more supplies around, and now I've got my main dinos that I need to bring back down to the raft, and they are all loaded up and we're heading out. So while we're walking, uh, one thing I forgot to mention when you're breeding dinosaurs is how the levels and stats work. So there's a lot to be said for just having one extra dinosaur, so um, you know, if I had some more extra pteranodons laying around, I would have been able to just you know fly off on another one as soon as that other one died. But uh, So it's great to have backups any way you look at it, especially if you can keep one breeding pair at home safely and then take the babies out into the world and then if you lose one, you've always got a constant resupply of uh, baby dinosaurs. But uh, the other really nice advantage is a baby dinosaur will be somewhere in between its parents' levels. So let's say I have a level 100 Dodicarus and a level 1 Dodicarus. The baby might be somewhere around level 50, which is still pretty dang good. So uh, even if we just tamed one, it's still great. By the way, I ran back over here and got some more supplies from the raft because I forgot to leave a pteranodon saddle here. And I really want to have a saddle so that I can fly out into the highlands and be able to do stuff. Uh, if I didn't have that, I'd be pretty much stuck back on foot. And it's actually really hard to get the materials for that. Look how big this Dodicarus is getting, and the uh, Pteranodon is almost full size now. So the main reason we've been hanging around here is to keep them uh, safe while we were leveling up so they wouldn't starve to death. But uh, they're looking pretty good now. So uh, the dinos are pretty decent levels, even though they just were born, uh, and that's because their their levels of a baby is kind of somewhere in between the parents. But uh, the other nice thing about that is when you get a new dinosaur, its stats are actually going to max out, uh, its level maxes out about 70 levels above where you tamed it. So if you tame a level 1, its max level is probably going to be about 71. And if you tame a level 100, you can actually get that up to like 170. But if you take two level 170 dinosaurs and 
breathe them together, their baby will start out around 170 and be able to eventually hit about 240. So the baby actually can get those 70 levels added to whatever level it's born at. So by doing that, you can constantly increase the final levels of your dinosaurs. The other nice thing is their stats. They have a pretty good chance of inheriting the best one stat, like the one highest stat from each parent. And uh, this is not going quite as well as I'd hoped moving this Ankylosaur around. So I'm going to leave him on the raft. He's sitting on the corner, and because he's actually sitting on the corner, it's going to let the walls of the Parasur tank pass right through him as I'm dropping him off there. So we should be in pretty good shape. That actually worked. Way to go. So um, with baby dinosaurs, they can inherit the best stat, usually just one stat from each parent. So let's say I have one Dodicarus that I've done nothing but melee damage and increase on it. The baby would take on that melee from, say, the male. And then if the female has nothing but movement speed, um, and she's got a really high movement speed stat, the baby may actually pick up her movement speed too. So the baby might end up having maxed out melee damage and maxed out movement speed right when it's born. So that's another thing to keep in mind as you're leveling up the parent dinosaurs, is it's good to put a ton of points into just one stat. Uh, as much as you can really handle, because the babies will become super powerful that way. So that's another thing that's been, uh, you know, feeding what I've been doing, because I've been trying to get each parent that gathers things to have maxed out melee damage. Because later on we may be able to put some other good stats in there. So I've got everything moved down to my raft base, and I'm going to take one more quick trip back up to the highlands, and uh, <laughs> we've got a Galline this way off in the distance. So we've got a bunch of silk here. If you see these purple flowers, they actually can get silk from those. Now, I'm pretty new to Ragnarok. I have not played Scorched Earth. I'm not big on desert. So I'm not even entirely sure what silk is good for. But why not grab it while we're here? And, uh, you know, this is kind of like shooting fish in a barrel. It's not as close as you can get to it. Tiny pond and our turrets are just shooting down all the fish. So, may as well grab the fish and potatoes, it makes a pretty nice breakfast uh, for the road. So I'll grab all this stuff and load it back up into this Pharisee. And we'll have some uh, grilled fish and chips on the way down the beach next episode. So, here we go. We are on our final trip. I also picked up a bunch of fertilizer, and I'm going to go ahead and add that to these turrets, because I'll probably be teleporting back out here later and just, you know, running on a rampage out here in the highlands with this Parasair tank. So, that's going to give me enough fuel to be able to do that. And our little uh, dung beetle that we left up here is going to slowly produce more fertilizer to power our turrets. So we are heading back up to our beautiful base here, and uh, it's kind of sad to leave it. I'll be leaving it for a little while because uh, there's a bunch of stuff we want to do up in Viking Bay. But, you know, I kind of miss our nice little beach house up on the cloud plateau, so it's going to be nice to be back towards the jungles again. Really fun country out there. So, we are going to fly back to the base, and that will be the end of the episode. And next episode, we will go all the way back to Viking Bay and have some fun over there. Thanks for watching, and tune in next time. Thanks so much for watching our video from the Ark Survival Guide. This is an amazing game, and it's sometimes really hard to learn how to survive, but uh, we are dedicated to teaching you how to not just survive, but how to thrive and have lots of fun on this amazing game. So we have a series for uh, just a let's play so you can watch how we've conquered this uh, vast open world. And we also have a guide series with specific guides on how to do certain things that are a little bit more confusing or difficult on this game. So be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We are constantly creating new videos for you to enjoy. So uh, you can travel through your journey on art with us and learn how to do everything you need to know to survive in this game. So thanks for watching and we will continue to bring you great content that is suitable for the entire family. 
except maybe the occasional dinosaur poop. What can you do? This is Ark. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon on the next video.